This is Karen Allen, and you're watching Du Bois Podcast. Where you going? Hound out. We just got here. <laughs> no, Boone. You just got here. I've been downstairs for an hour entertaining some kid from Pig's Knuckle, Arkansas. Um, maybe we could drive up to your folks' place this weekend. Oh, fabulous. My car filled with your beer buddies going up to empty my parents' liquor cabinet? It's too depressing to think about. Oh, come on, scrim, pal. <laughs> Tony, what school you go to? Look, whatever your name is. Richie, what's yours? It's Nina. Look, I don't go around talking to every guy who tries for a sly elbow tit in the street. Hey, what do you got here? What is this? Oh, uh, yeah, I know what this book. That's a great book. The whole thing or just the dirty parts? Hello, Marion. Indiana Jones. Always knew someday you'd come walking back through my door. I never doubted that. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our episode of Voice Podcast. My guest today is an actress and director. You may have seen her as Katie in Animal House, Nina in The Wanderers, Marion Ravenwood in the Indiana Jones franchise, Jenny Hayden in Starman, Claire Phillips in Scrooge, and many more. So, welcome, Ms. Karen Allen. Welcome, Karen. Thanks, thanks. Nice to be here. Yeah. So, uh, Karen, what have you been up to? How are you doing? What's going on? What have I been up to yeah. as of when? Let, just lately? You can do uh, as of you know, the whole COVID situation lately. Up to you. How, how, what's well, I direct quite a bit in the theater. So, I've been directing plays, but of course, with COVID, there has been no theater. So, uh, that's been put on hold a bit. And in fact, you know, most everything has been put on hold. Um, I, I did uh, a film uh, last summer, which is coming out this summer. It premieres at the Woods Hole Film Festival in August. It's called A Stage of Twilight. And um, I did another film in Nashville just this spring. And um, uh, so I've been doing a little bit of work here and there, uh, which, you know, people are kind of sticking their toes back in the water with COVID. Actually, I got COVID on the film in Nashville. So um, I've now been vaccinated, boosted, and I've had COVID. So there's, it feels like there's very little else that could uh, happen to me COVID-wise, although you never know. Um, so, you know, I, but, but I'm working on some projects, a uh, project I'm going to do in the theater. I'm already working on it for next year. And um, uh, I'm working on another project I'm going to do as a film. Um, and I don't know quite when we'll start that yet. So just, you know, things like that. Plus I have a design studio here in, in uh, Massachusetts where I live. So when I'm not doing other stuff, I'm usually in my design studio. I think that's a stage of Twilight. Was it, was it with William Saylor, I think, your newer project with him? William Saylor? I'm sorry, can I say that again? Oh, sorry about that. I think your new a stage of Twilight, isn't that with William Saylor? I think you're acting alongside him. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, yeah. we play husband and wife, yeah. I, should, I, I can't wait till that comes out. I actually, it looks like a really good concept of the story, so I'll be sure to watch it when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. So, uh, what made you want to become an actress, and who would you say is your biggest inspiration for acting and directing? Like, what inspired? Um, I, when I was uh, twenty-one, a friend of mine took me to see a theater company called the Polish Theater Laboratory, and they were from Poland, obviously, and they were t touring the country, for the, the United States. I think for the first time when I saw them, it could have been the second time, but. I saw this company's performance of a piece called Apocalypsis, and it just changed everything in my life. I walked into the theater performance one person, and I walked out a different person. Um, and it had, and the, it was completely in Polish, so I didn't understand a word. But um, it, it was so profound, and it so transcended language that it, I didn't need to understand what they were saying, what they were doing and what they were emanating was so extraordinary. And I just thought, I don't know what this is I saw, but whatever it is, I want to learn more about it. And it turned out that a student of theirs uh, who had been in Poland with them for about six years was living in Washington, D.C., where I was living. And I 
I uh, started studying there with that theater company and um, I started working in the theater. So, so that I did that for, well, I've worked in the theater my whole life, but I, I worked specifically with this theater that was called the Washington Theater Laboratory for a few years in Washington, DC. And then I moved to New York City um, as the theater company was kind of breaking apart because a lot of the actors were moving off in other directions. And uh, so then I, was, then I was living in New York. I really went to New York to work in the theater but I ended up getting jobs in films uh, where before I got a job in the theater. So, wow. any, any like people did you watch like from like theater or movies or shows like anybody you like liked or idolized? Well, I I grew up watching people like Katherine Hepburn and Ingrid Bergman and James Stewart and Cary Grant and Betty Davis and Joan Crawford and. Um, and then I, I sort of fell in love with a lot of European actors like um, uh, Liv Bowman was a huge influence on me. Um, probably uh, Julie, uh, gosh, I'm just completely blanking on her last name right now. Um, uh, the beautiful English actress, Julie. Andrews, Julie Andrews? No, 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 no. Julie Christie, Julie Christie. Um, you know, th those were, you know, the, Albert Finney I thought was extraordinary. I mean, there were just a lot of actors uh, from uh, various parts of the world that I got very interested in because when I was probably 22, I was very, I got very, very uh, fascinated by European films uh, and and even Asian films, films from Japan and, and um, so, you know that was those things were influencing me a lot at that time. Wow, I mean, like you're like in my opinion, like you're a legendary actress, Karen. Well, thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, what is your favorite acting role you portrayed? If you choose all your roles. What's your favorite? My favorite role. If you oh, role. My favorite role. You know, those are always, you kind of fall in love with every role you choose to do. Um, otherwise, it would be pretty hard to play the role. Uh, you're, you know, the, the beauty of being an actor is you're really stepping into someone else's shoes. You know, you're taking on the circumstance, putting, putting the circumstances of your own life sort of off the side, and you're taking on the circumstances and the story and the relationships of another person's life. So it, there is a real uh, profound connection between oneself as an actor and the characters you choose to, to portray. And, um, you know, I, I, I have to say, you know, I have a fondness for almost every character I've I've played even when I played some dark characters. I mean, one of the most challenging is on stage for about a year and a half, I played the adult Helen Keller. So I played a woman who was blind and deaf and had been since she was quite a young child. So um, uh, she was locked, in, she was very locked into a world. And the only way she could communicate was she had a, a teacher who had been with her since she was quite young and she learned to read, she would spell into her hand um, uh, and she could, she could read what she would finger spell into her hand. And, um, uh, she, and she learned to speak by, by imitating the vibrations in people's throats when they spoke. So she, she, very few people could understand her. But, so that was a very challenge, to play somebody who can't see and can't hear and yet you're on stage as an actor portraying this person. That was probably one of the more challenging roles I ever played, for sure. Wow. You, you've done so many like, cool roles. Like you did like, like film and television. Like, oh my God, like you've done so many cool films like The Wanderers. Like The Wanderers is a really good film. I don't know if you remember working on that. It was like a funny and cool film, The Wanderers. Yeah, I haven't seen The Wanderers for years and years, but that's a wonderful director named Phil Kaufman. And, uh, yeah, I just have a little supporting role in that, but it, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was a very, it was very, I think I did that right after Animal House. It was the second mm -hmm. film I ever worked on. 
if you know if you wouldn't mind okay you know how you did like for indiana jones can you say like this is like my favorite line you say in indiana jones you probably know the line the indiana jones always knew someday you come to do more that line you know talk about Karen? Um, yeah you want me to say it if it's possible because that's my favorite line in the whole movie sorry um you want me to say it as though i'm imitating myself if it's possible i'm oh, sorry <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Indiana Jones, I always knew someday you'd come walking back through my door. Is that the line? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, it was really cool too, like in the moments where like, we sock him, you know, I don't know if you were like. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, I, I, like now, uh, how was like the audition process? Like, how did you like get the role of Mary? So, I guess, like, how did um, Steven that? Spielberg was friends with. Um, I had done three films before that. I had done um, Animal House, The Wanderers, and a film called A Small Circle of Friends. And the, those three directors, John Landis, Phil Kaufman, and um, uh, Rob Cohen, were all friends of Steven Spielberg's. And so he had seen those three films, and he came to New York and wanted to just meet me for this film. And we met and talked for about 10 minutes. And then he decided he wanted me to screen test for it in Los Angeles. So I was flown out to Los Angeles and I did screen tests with a couple of different actors playing the Indiana Jones part because there was no Indiana Jones actor chosen yet. So I auditioned with Tim Matheson from Animal House and with a wonderful actor, um, oh God, my brain is not awake yet this morning. Um, but I, I auditioned with two actors, and um, and then they told me I had the the role. So it was there were a lot of of actresses that wanted this role. I, I hear um, uh, I don't know who all of them were, but uh, I was very fortunate to get chosen for it. Wow! And, and then according to like an interview, I heard like uh, Harrison Ford knew if you did, like you basically did like all your stunts. Like how was that like? Like, no, you know, as Harrison likes to say, actors never do stunts, ever. Mm -hmm. Actors do physical acting. You only do a stunt mm -hmm. if it's important that they see your face in the mm -hmm. physical acting. But you can't really put actors at risk when there are millions and millions and millions of dollars involved. So, you know, when actors say they do their stunts, they, they do some things that might be considered stunts, but they do the things in which they could not possibly get hurt for the most part, because to put an actor's well-being at risk, you're putting the entire film at risk. So, you know, if you just think about it practically, actors don't do stunts. <laughs> Stunt. You know, very few actors would be qualified to do most stunts. I personally wouldn't be able to do stunts because I'd be too like nervous. Like you said, like it'd be like a risk. That makes sense. Like, yeah, and being nervous would be a sure way to get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No uh, favorite Indiana Jones film. If you could choose your favorite, and even too, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Like, do you have like a favorite one? No. A favorite okay. film. Yes. Well, I think that Raiders to the Lost Ark certainly was, you know, it's the original. And then, you know, s sequels, you want sequels to be as good as the original, but they very rarely really live up to people's expectations. I mean, if I were going to choose a favorite of the four that have been made, I would certainly go with Raiders. It's, it's always, the, the originals are always the classics, you know, always the classics. Well, I mean, it's because the original is a classic is why they make the sequels. If the original was just sort of, eh, you know, yeah. there would not be any sequels. <laughs> so. <laughs> now, uh, how did it feel when you won the 1981 Saturn Award for Best Actress based on your performance as Mary? Like, how did that feel? What award did I win? I don't even know that I, I didn't, I don't think I even knew I won that. What, what award was it? Oh, the, the Saturn Award. You know what? Uh, you're right. I, I, I actually, I wasn't, I couldn't be there for some reason. I think I was shooting something else. So I wasn't at the ceremony. Um, but it was, it was, I think I had at that point won some awards in the theater, but it was the first award I'd ever won, you know, for a film. So I remember being very uh, thrilled about it, but I, you know, it was kind of a non-event because I 
I couldn't be there, and I think they sent me the award. It's it's a very pretty award, actually. I uh, I do have it at my house, and it's quite attractive as awards go. <laughs> Is there a role you would love to portray that you haven't done? That you would love to like a certain type of role. A role I would love to portray that I haven't. Um, you know, I'm not a writer really, so so. Um, you know, no, I, I I wait for the most part for people to write something extraordinary um, that I can get totally excited about doing. Um, you know, as a director, I go out looking for material. There's lots of things I would like to direct, um, but I'm, I'm looking at a much broader scope of material. I mean, the beauty of directing is that you, there doesn't have to be a role for me in it. So it opens up the entire world of literature and plays and books and anything you can think of, I could direct. Um, so, but you know, as an actor, there has, you know, there has to be a role I can play. So, so uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm, I don't know, you know, I guess you're talking about novels or something. Is there a role in a novel that I would love to play? Um, nothing comes to mind right now, although there probably are. There probably are books I've read where I'd, I've thought, oh, I'd love to, to do this. There was a time in which I really, really wanted to do Walker Percy's book, Second Coming, but I've, I've now outgrown that role by, by several decades. Because believe it or not, as an author, Tony Karen, I actually want to become a director slash writer because I love, love, love to write scripts. So, I mean, you love to write scripts. Yes. That's a big oh, hobby. Like, it, believe, believe it or not, like, I do podcasts and I do, I like, I like to write. Like, that's my passion is writing. I love to do it. With them. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Keep doing yeah. it. Do it. Great. Thank you. Also, okay, now, uh, I don't know if you heard about the new, uh, you probably heard about it, the new Indiana Jones 5 movie that's coming out next yeah. year. Yep. Yeah. I've heard about it. Yep. That would be cool if Mary came back. You know, she's got to come back. You know, the legend, Marion. It'd be cool if what? Marion, you know, the legend character, if she came back. It's been, it's already shot. Mm -hmm. So she's yeah, it's coming, out, it's coming out next summer, I think next June. That, that'd be cool, like if they somehow snuck like a little cameo of you, that'd be cool. I'm not, that'd be cool. You know? It would be cool, but I can't tell you anything about it. <laughs> All good. <laughs> now, uh, oh. <laughs> You know, over the years of your career, do you still keep in touch with co-stars and directors you've worked with? You still keep in touch? Sometimes, I mean, there are some times where you make a really strong connection with a, either an, another actor you're working with or with a director. And I have stayed friends with some directors I've worked with for my whole lifetime. Other directors, you know, they're just, you know, they're in it, they're in their own world. And while you might love working with them, you know, you really don't talk to them or see them, you know, unless you meet in some sort of social situation. Um, it just depends. I mean, you know, there are some some films, you know, that, you know, the, just the way in which you shoot the film and the way in which you're working with people, you, you become much closer to them than, than other films. Some, some films are a little more scattered. You come in, you do your role, you leave. Um, and, uh, uh, but yeah, I, actually, some of my closest friends are people that I met on films early on in my career, in particular. I'm, I'm assuming you keep in touch with Harrison, you know, Mr. Ford. Uh, well, we live so far apart uh -huh. that I really, I rarely get to see him, but we stay in touch a, a little bit. Um, we, you know, I, I've never socialized a, a lot with Harrison ex except when we were actually working together. But, but. Um, uh, you know, he, he, you know, our worlds are quite separate physically. Um, uh, he, he's on one coast, I'm on the other coast. Too many kind of like instant transmission, like teleport from one spot to the other spot. Just like, hey, here's some. <laughs> That'd be cool. Well, he's got a pretty busy life. He's got, he's got a lot going on in his world. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Who would you say is the coolest person that you have worked with in your whole career? Who's the coolest? The coolest. 
I mean, I think, I think Jeff Bridges might win that that award. Jeff Bridges. Yeah, I'm like, gonna give it to Jeff. <laughs> like, like, like you look at so many cool people, like John Belushi, Animal House, Harrison Ford, for example, Indiana Jones. You know, Jeff Bridges, like you said, like Bill Murray. Like, oh my God, Karen. Yeah. So many amazing people. Yeah. yeah, no, I have. That's a that is one of the real kind of great things about being an actor is you get to work with and meet a lot of, you know, really. I I, I am very very fond of actors in general, but you know, it's when I get to know actors, I'm often even more fond of them as people. Um, I think they're, I, I think it's a, it's a fascinating profession and it draws to it a lot of people that I really have a, a affinity for. So the uh, Karen Allen coolest person of all time is Jeff Bridges? Yeah, for sure. I like that. Now, uh, if you want me asking too, any, uh, cool like behind the scenes stories you have with uh, Harrison sorry I ask a lot about Harrison but any cool oh, stories with Harrison um oh gosh pro you know probably a lot of them um you know I think we just you know we we had a lot of fun working together you know we were in Tunisia for a long time in the desert we were all very 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 sick we got terrible um uh, kind of Montezuma's revenge and we're just, you know, sick to our stomachs constantly. Um, you know, we've worked quite a bit in London and I love London. And, and so that's always fun to, to be in London together. And, um, um, you know, I, I, nothing comes to, you know, immediately to mind, like, Oh, here's the coolest story or anything, but, but, uh, uh, no, we've always enjoyed working together. What director taught you most? Is there a director you want to work with? Do you have a that you want to work with? A director I haven't worked with that I would like to work with? Yes. Oh my God, there's so so many. Um, <clears throat> let me think who I would have liked to work with, who I would like to work with. Um, you know, it's always questions like this, and then your mind goes completely blank. Um, Joe Wright probably is, is a director who I really, really, really admire. A uh, British director has done some of the most beautiful films. Um, he works often with Kieran Knightley. She's in quite a few of his films. Um, he's just, I think, an extraordinary film director. Uh, Michael Lee, again, British. Um, he's really an extraordinary film director from my perspective. Well, uh, if you were like an actress or director, what do you think you would have done as a career instead? Like, what would you have done? And what other interesting hobbies do you, besides acting and directing, and what inspired Karen Allen Fairburn? Well, Karen Allen Fiber Arts was inspired by my, my grandmother, who I was very close to growing up. She was an amazing uh, knitter, and she taught me to knit when I was just a child. And I went to, um, my interest in all of that sort of came out of my fascination with my grandmother. And I went to FIT, which is the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City when I was 17. And I studied design for two years. It was only a two-year school at the time. And then I decided I wanted to travel and I went other directions. And when I came back from that, I started working in the theater. So I never really followed that professionally at the time, but um, I always knew somehow I would come back to it. And when my son was little and when it, it became clear that I was not gonna be able to do the traveling that I had been doing, um, you know, when he went into school, I decided I would start a knitwear company. And, um, and then I spent a couple of years just working on, on, I work on Japanese knitting machines. So I, I bought some, ja I, I went back to FIT uh, in New York City. I studied Japanese knitting machines. I bought a few Japanese knitting machines and brought them up to where I live in the countryside. And I, Spent a couple of years just playing around with them, and I came up with some 
ways of using them that were very unusual. And I started to create a, a knitwear line. And when I showed it to people, they were very enthusiastic about it. So it sort of egged me on and I got um, uh, very encouraged to keep going. And it was a great thing for me to do because my son was in school and I had to say no to most roles that people were offering me because I couldn't really pluck him out of school. And, you know, the sets are extremely boring places if you're not actually working on them. <laughs> you know, for somebody, for a, you know, a 12 year old child to be on a film set for three months, you can't imagine anything more boring for them. So, um, so I, I, you know, I, I, I kept going with it and I started, uh, I built a studio and then I have a store uh, in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. And um, yeah, and then other things, you know, um, uh, I think, you know, if, if I had the talent, I would have loved to have been a musician. Um, but I, I tried playing many instruments in the course of my life and I just felt like, you know, for some reason I had like a, a limited amount of talent, which was not, you know, uh, uh, something I was willing to deal with the frustration of, of having a limited amount of talent. I wanted to feel like anything was possible and I didn't feel, you know, I've always felt that way as an actor, but I don't so much feel that way as a musician. I, you know, I, I really can see what I can do and what I can't do. Um, uh, yeah. No, uh, favorite band or artist type of music? What kind of music do you like? Say it again. Oh, sorry about that. Favorite band or artist and type of music? What kind of music do you like? Oh, I like so many different kinds of music. I, I, I love reggae. I lived in the West Indies for a period of time in my life, and reggae became kind of like the uh, background to my soul or something. Um, I just love it. I love classical music. I love, you know, singer-songwriter music. I love a lot of the music, you know, from the 60s and 70s. I could go on and on and on naming bands and, and uh, you know, fantastic songwriters and, um, you know, big fan of Van Morrison, big fan of Joni Mitchell, big fan of uh, Body rate, big fan of James Taylor. You know, it just goes on and on. But I, I, there's very, there's very little. I love music from all over the world. There's very little music I don't enjoy. See, I like the older music. Like nowadays, I can't compare it back to the original classics. Yeah, I like a lot of music right now. I think Billie Eilish, for instance, is brilliant. Brilliant. I just find her phenomenal. Like that. Now, uh, are there any projects you have in the works that are coming up? Anything coming up in the works? Well, the one I told you about. I mean, there's not a lot, you know, the the film Stage of Twilight that I did last summer. That was the first possible film I could have done in terms of COVID. So that one's now going to come out this summer. Um, and then the, the the I did a film in Nashville called Bad on Paper. Um, I did a little pilot for a series um, that's called Hitman, which is kind of fun. It's a film noir kind of thing. Um, I feel like there's something else I've been working on too, but I can't think of what it is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you caught me on a, on a morning where my brain, I say I haven't had my coffee yet. I'm <laughs> You're a morning brain, like you said. <laughs> well, I do. What is your advice for younger kids on becoming an actor or actress? What's your advice? To work, to, to, you know, I would say take on every possible, you know, theater thing you can do. If you can get roles, even as a walk on or, mm -hmm. you know, a stand in or anything in film, just get onto sets, work, watch, learn, uh, do plays, play as many different kinds of characters as you can, find a great teacher read the literature. Um, the thing that I, I have taught uh, for a number of years as an adjunct professor at Bard College at Simons Rock, which is, is near here. And I'm, I'm flabbergasted when I work with kids who were, you know, college age. Um, they don't know the playwrights. They've never read Tennessee Williams or, or you know, Strindberg or on and on and on and on and and I'm and they and yet they purport that they want to be actors and I'm like no 
you don't want to be an actor or you would be gobbling up the history of the theater and learning everything you could about the playwrights, not only of your time, but the history of playwriting. Um, I mean, most actors I know when they really knew that they wanted to be an actor, you couldn't get a play out of their hands. You know, they would just be going and, you know, borrowing or, or, or taking from the library or buying or whatever they could, you know, all of Tennessee Williams or all of Strindberg or all of uh, Sam Shepard or all of a playwright and just reading the entire canon of their work because that's who, who we are. I mean, that's what we want to do. That's what we want to learn about. So you can't, I would say you shouldn't be an actor if you have a tendency to be lazy. Actors are not lazy people. <laughs> they can't be. They're, they're in a constant, um, uh, they're learning. Everything that, they're, that, that is there to learn, they're, it, watch films. Watch films several times. Figure out why you like the performance of this actor and are not so interested in this actor. Like, what is it about that actor that that is intriguing and interesting? Um, you know, who do you want to be as a person and as an actor? I mean, we, you know, we are our own instruments as actors. So all of those things. I would say that one of the most important things would be to find a really great teacher and to let someone really help you, uh, you know, so that you don't develop bad habits. You know, a lot of kids come out of high school programs where, you know, they're, they're taught to overact and indicate and, and, um, you know, and, and there's a very good reason why, because very few plays are written for 14 year olds. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people at 14, they play people who are 40 who have three children and a bad marriage and they know nothing about it. So because they have no real understanding of it, they, they tend to kind of indicate things that they don't have a real connection to. And you don't want to do that as an actor. You want, you want to work from a deeper place than that. So a good teacher will guide you in that direction. Thank you and Karen for being an awesome, amazing guest. I had a fun time chatting with you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Joseph. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And you stay awesome, Karen. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Bye.